There's a lot of really unfounded biblical speculation going on out there today. Bible prophecy has gone off in several directions. Let's talk about what the Bible really says. And it's my pleasure to introduce to you today uh, author, lecturer, Bill Solis. Bill, welcome to Prophecy Watchers. Gary, it's so good to be back on your program again. It's great to have you here, and I, feel, I have the feeling it's just in time, because Bill, there are just so many theories being bounced around out there. Survivalism, uh, people are talking about the rapture not happening until way at the end of the tribulation. People are... are, are trying to frighten, I think, Christians into believing that they're going to experience some kind of judgment. And let's talk about what the Bible really says about Latter-day prophecy. Absolutely. And you know, there's no shortage of that information for this generation, Gary. I mean, there's more said about this generation than any other generation in the Bible. And Bible prophecy is so important. As you know, it, the Lord felt it was important to put about a third of the Bible, almost 10,000 verses out of the 31,000, devoted toward prophecy because He wants us to know what's coming. And we've got relevant prophecies for our time that we can get into the details that are very specific. We can look at them very literally. Well, if you read the Bible literally, which I do, by the way, uh, it's clear to me. It's point by point, step by step, you have a premise here, another premise here. They all connect together. They make a lot of sense. Uh, let's talk for a moment uh, about this DVD, Out of the Mouth of Two Witnesses, featuring Jonathan Kahn, Mark Biltz, and Bill Solace. And uh, uh, there are phenomena today. Uh, Bill, Bill Solace, you, you're right in the middle of all this. You've talked about... Uh, uh, the Ezekiel 38 war, the Psalm 83 war. Uh, Jonathan Kahn has talked about the Shemitah. Mark Biltz writes about the blood moons. There's this sense that, that something is impending. Uh, let's help uh, our, our viewers to put all this together and make some sense of it. Uh, and let's see, see if we can integrate these ideas. Well, Gary, I think we're at a position at this point in time on God's timeline prophetically where we're actually going to see the fulfillment, the literal fulfillment of another Bible prophecy, and maybe prophecies, plural. And when God issues Bible prophecies, these are events that He knows are significant, that will have a global impact, and in America especially. So I think it's important to look at, well, what po possible prophecies are we looking at? I'm real excited about this DVD, because on it you've got the prophetic voices, not only of myself, but of Jonathan Kahn, who's been warning about the harbinger, the presaged warnings that were things that happened back to the northern kingdom of Israel before it was destroyed in 722 B.C., that are resembling events that are going on and taking place over the last, uh, you know, since 911 in America. Um, and the Shemitah cycles. What is on God's calendar? Uh, the, the, we've got one coming up here in uh, September 13th of 2015. And then Mark Biltz gets in and talks about what about the warning signs in the heavens and the, the blood moon tetrads. And we've got our final one coming up on Passover, a super blood moon on September 28th. And when I'm called into the mix with these gentlemen, which I've been on many TV shows with them and at conferences with them, I then am called into bat cleanup. What, why is everybody now on the edge of their seat with these warnings and things like that? Bill, tell us what literal pro prophecies are on your radar screen. Well, you started a, a long time ago, and I can't remember just how long ago. We've talked several times about Psalm 83. And I won't read the whole thing, but it, it starts out talking about the Tabernacles of Edom, the Ishmaelites, the Hagarenes, Gabel, and you, you have uh, the enemies of Israel who have banded together here in Psalm 83, which is a prophecy. And they have one idea, and that is to obliterate Israel. Now, I don't have to tell anyone who's watching right now that there are a lot of people in the world today saying they want to obliterate Israel. So you brought Psalm 83 to, uh, I think, a kind of a reality. In other words, it's something that you can see happening right now. And I want to talk um, for a moment about ISIS. Uh, we hear about ISIS mm. all the time. Uh, so let's go there. Okay, well, you know, frankly, 
there's a good possibility that ISIS could be identified in Psalm 83. Mm. And just in a nutshell, for your listeners, Psalm 83, written 3,000 years ago by Asaph, who was one of King David's worship leaders, we're told in 2 Chronicles 29, verse 30, he was actually a prophet. It says he was a seer. And the Hebrew word is a prophet, in essence. So he was like a Jeremiah or an Isaiah, so to speak. And he wrote about a, the conclusion of the Arab-Israeli conflict, that there would be an Arab confederacy of what we would see today on a map, which would be the Arab states that share common borders with Israel. And inside of those states, you've got terrorist populations such as Hamas and Hezbollah. You've got the, the Palestinians, of course, and they want their own state over there. And the prophecy talks about them coming together as a confederacy to cut the nation of Israel off, that the name of Israel be remembered no more. And in verse 12 of Psalm 83, the motive is they want to take for the, themselves the pastures of God. They want the promised land. And these are the Arab states that voted against Israel becoming a nation in 1947 in the United Nations. These are the nations that went to war with Israel in 1948, 1967, and 73. And inside of this mess now, we've got to add ISIS. And I can tell you where I think they might be, Gary. ISIS, the... Uh Islamic State, which is another way of saying caliphate, a large scale uh, and very powerful state, the Islamic State of, uh, of, of Iraq and some people say ISIL and the Levant. Some people say ISIS. Let's talk about ISIS versus ISIL for a moment, the, the two meanings of that term and, and what these people are looking at. Well, you make a good point. And if you do a Google search on ISIS versus ISIL, you'll find almost 10 to 1, most people go with ISIS, which means the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. Mm -hmm. Now, even though the popularity is toward calling it ISIS, our present Obama administration gravitates to continually talking about ISIL, which means the Islamic State in the Levant. Now, for your audience who's not familiar with the Levant, in essence, it's pretty much the promised land that Abraham uh, received from God in Genesis 15, 18, from the river of Egypt, the Nile, to the river Euphrates, which courses through modern-day Iraq and Syria. That is called the Levant for all intents and purposes. And that's what the Islamic State, ISIS or ISIL, that's what they want to do. They want to take over that entire Middle East area and establish a Sunni-led, not a Shiite-led, which would be like Iran, a Sunni-led caliphate. And the concern is, if they go unchecked, they are gaining momentum. And they've got their eyes on Jordan. Um, you've got terrorist organizations that are finding it as an opportune uh, organization, terrorist organization to join with, align with, like Jabhat al-Nusra, an offshoot group of al-Qaeda in Syria, Anwar al-Bayat in the Sinai in Egypt. And you're even hearing about Hamas talking to them. These are Sunni terrorist organizations that are looking at an opportunity to join up with ISIS, if they go unchecked, this may be their big final opportunity to have an Islamic Sunni-led state in the Middle East with the expanse of ultimately going out into the whole world. And so it's very troubling, and I think they're in Psalm 83, verse 8, Gary. Now, the barrier to their uh, aspirations is Israel. If Israel weren't there, uh, they, they would do just fine. But... but the whole idea here in Psalm 83 is uh, this little s saying, uh, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. That little phrase right there sounds like today's news. Uh, they want to cut off Israel from being a nation. They want to wipe Israel off of the map. We've heard that not only from these, these Arab states that don't even recognize Israel's right to exist that are in right. Psalm 83. We've even heard it from Iran they want to wipe Israel off the map, and of course they're getting nuclear weapons that are concerning people. That's why we're dealing with the whole negotiations. But that's the situation. They want to take that land, and, and even the Palestinian this textbooks for the students, the maps of that area are not including Israel. They're including what they want is Palestine. So the, they don't want peace with the Jews, according to Psalm 83. They want peace without the Jews. They don't want a two-state solution. They want a one-state solution, and they want to fly the flag of Palestine, and I think that may be what Psalm 83 is warning about. Now, we have this situation. It's as clear as today's news. ISIS is constantly in the news, uh, both abroad and also in the United States, where 
little uh, underground groups are uh, plotting and planning to knock out major installations in the West, and I don't think that th that's an exaggeration to say that. And then you have, going along with that, uh, the, th the things that are happening that Jonathan Kahn talks about. Cycles, economic cycles based upon uh, the Shemitah cycles uh, as given uh, to the nation Israel. And then of course you have, I think the blood moons have been one of the phenomena of our era because even non-Christians have been caught up and swept away in the whole blood moon idea. And they're watching for the, for the next one that will be in September, the fourth blood moon. And, and of course, Mark Bills has written about that. Out of the mouth of two witnesses features uh, Bill Salas, it features Mark Bills, it features Jonathan Kahn. You put all this together, Psalm 83, the blood moons, and, and uh, the Shemitah cycle, and you've got the world out there kind of shaking in its boots. Uh, so let's make some sense of all this. Uh, where are we on some kind of a timeline right now, Bill? Uh, are we close? Are we far away? Well, that's, that's the relevant question right now. Where are we on God's prophetic timeline? Like we talked about in the beginning of the program, so much information was given by God who loves us and wants us to know what's forthcoming is available to us right now. And, and we've been talking somewhat about Psalm 83. Yeah. But the good thing about this DVD before I... I find our location on the timeline for your audience, is that you're offering in this DVD four different discs and individual discs with interviews that are at least an hour long of uncut, unseen, unheard insights from Jonathan Kahn, one-on-one -on -one with the host, Mark Biltz, and myself. And then the, the, the parts of those interviews were put into actual a TV show that aired several times on Harvest Television. So the, you've got so much information right here and the, one of the good things that's involved here is that the audience is going to be able to get from this product the ability to know uh, what the, we answer all the objections. You know, Mark Biltz and Jonathan Kahn have, have their share of critics out there, myself included as well. So the good thing, the interviewer gave us the opportunity to address our concerns and our warnings and how to answer the objections and things like that. So basically, it's a very important DVD from that perspective with a lot of important timely insights. Now, where are we at on the timeline, Gary? Here's my, I think we need to put it into two major events, marquee events that are very important for, from God's perspective. One was the rebirth of the nation of Israel in 1948. Okay. That is the, when the world hourglass made its final spin and the end times began. That is the big event. So many prophecies were foretold that someday God would bring the, the Jews back out from the nations of the world into the land of Israel. And he did that for a specific purpose. And that's going to lead us to the other event on the timeline, the other marquee event. And that's Ezekiel 38, the Gog of Magog invasion, which is the event that God is going to, through Israel, through his people Israel, through supernatural means, he's going to stop the most massive Mideast war invasion of all times when Russia comes together in Ezekiel 38 with Iran and Turkey and nine members all together in their coalition to come against Israel, and they will be stopped in their tracks, not by America, not by the Israeli Defense Forces, but by fire, hailstone, and brimstone by the Lord himself because he is going to uphold his holy name in the midst of his people Israel, they shall not profane it anymore, and the nations shall know he's the Lord. And this is where this is heading. Israel's together now. There's Jews in the land. There's Israelis. The chosen people are in the promised land, and God is going to put the world on official notice in Ezekiel 38. And that verse I quoted, uphold his holy name, is Ezekiel 39, 7. This is where all the momentum is heading right now. Ezekiel 38 and 39. And we're 67 years since Israel's rebirth, moving closely very closely to the nearness of Ezekiel 38. Now, I've talked with Bill enough over the years to, to understand what he thinks about Ezekiel 38. That's the invasion of Israel from the north by Gog and a uh, confederation of, of other powers. Uh, first you have Gog, and then in the second in line is, is Persia, today's Iran. And it's astounding to me, Bill, that when you pick up the papers today, when you look at the internet today, what do you see? <laughs> you see Iran and Russia. Russia moving south and east. 
Iran wants to develop a nuclear stockpile. Some time ago, you uh, wrote a, a book entitled Nuclear Showdown in Iran, and you've been following this thing for a long time. Let's try to put some of that into perspective right now. Well, you're right. <coughs> it's hard to keep Iran off the front page of any newspaper at this point in time because of their nuclear aspirations and this nuclear deal that's being negotiated. And it's very troubling. Now, President Barack Obama feels it's you know a very good deal. Right. Whereas Benjamin Netanyahu, on the other hand, feels it's the worst deal imaginable. Um, I believe a prophecy has been written about this in Jeremiah chapter 49, verses 34 through 39, dealing with ancient Elam. Because when you look on a map, clearly, like you said, Persia is in Ezekiel 38, Ezekiel 38, verse 5. But that's not the only prophecy written about modern-day Iran. Jeremiah wrote about uh, Iran, rather. Jeremiah wrote about Elam. So Elam hugs the Persian Gulf. It is where the Bashar nuclear reactor is. So we've got to look when we talk about the future of Iran, not only at Persia in Ezekiel 38, but Elam in Jeremiah 49. Now, Elam, spelled E-L-A-M, is not a, uh, a people that you've heard very much about in the past. In fact, you, you may be saying to yourself right now, Elam, what's that? Uh, here's Jeremiah uh, 49, 34, and the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet against Elam in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah king of Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the chief of their might. So here's a prophecy, and you believe it's a latter-day prophecy, against this mysterious Elam. You've written about that, but for those who haven't read what you've written, just kind of brief us a little bit. Oh, six verses entirely there. It's a very short prophecy, but it's very powerful, and it's very timely. And yes, he's going to break the bow of Elam. But what's, what's critical to know, and I think this is important because on the timeline right now, I would say to the audience right now that the one thing about this prophecy that Gary is reading to you in Jeremiah 49 it says that the reason that God's going to break the bow of Elam, which will ultimately result in many other details that were given in there, is because God is angry with Iran. It says, why don't you read uh, Jeremiah 49, verse 37 for the audience. And I happen to be looking right at it. For, for I will cause Elam to be dismayed, that is, frightened, before their enemies and before them that seek their life, and I will bring evil upon them, even my fierce anger saith the Lord, and I will send the sword after them till I have consumed them. I will set my throne in Elam and will destroy from thence the king and the princes, saith the Lord. But it shall come to pass in the latter days that I will bring again the captivity of Elam, saith the Lord. So we've even got a little latter day signature on this. Well, we do. And there is some good news in the prophecy, and we'll talk about that. But let's not underestimate the importance of God's fierce anger. Jeremiah wrote this prophecy in 596 B.C. It is dealing with modern-day Iran, and it says that the Lord is going to be furious, fiercely angry with Iran. And why, Gary? You read it. Yeah. He's going to destroy the kings and the princes, meaning he's upset with some bad leadership because you do not destroy good leadership. And you read in the very first opening verses there, he's going to break the bow at the foremost of their might. So the Lord is angry because there's bad leadership that wants to launch something powerful somewhere and he's going to prevent that he's going to break the bow so that cannot happen and when you read other parts of that prophecy that disaster that gets created at that judgment because god is angry it creates a destruction and a worldwide dispersion it says there'll be no nation where the outcasts of elam don't go nations plural meaning there's a worldwide dispersion. It sounds like a humanitarian crisis. It sounds like it's dealing with a nuclear scenario. And when you put the location of the judgment where the Bashar nuclear reactor is, yeah. which is a, a nuclear disaster waiting to happen. Where By the Russia, way, that nuclear reactor is in the very territory of old Elam. Right? It's right there in ancient Elam. And when you talk about Russia being drawn in, hooks in the jaw of Ezekiel yeah. 38, you've got an issue there because Russia is instrumental in the establishment of that Bashar nuclear reactor, and now they've got two additional contracts to build two more nuclear reactors in that very region, and this is very troubling. With So Iran and Russia are in bed together like never before. You know, in one of the Psalms, uh, we, we have the phrase, uh, the arrow that flieth by night. 
And, you know, people are not using arrows anymore. The enemy has an arrow that flies. But on the other hand, we're using missiles that are the modern day equivalent of arrows. And we have launching pads for missiles. And if you stop and think about it, the bow uh, is, is a really good analogy for a missile launch pad. And the arrow is a, a very good idiom for a missile, which is what the, all the, 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 uh, the fighting is about right now. Yeah, and is Jeremiah going to say in 596 B.C., use words like missiles and launch pads and intercontinental ballistic missiles? No, because that was not in his repertoire. What was in his repertoire was bows and arrows, right. launching something somewhere. And the Elamites, which go back to the time of Abraham, way back in Genesis, we find that Abraham, when he went to rescue his nephew Lot, uh, he, he was dealing with King Chedorlaomer of the Elamites. They were warmongers. They were warlike people. And Isaiah talks about them in Isaiah 22 as being expert archers. So the, the idiom of bows and arrows and, and expert archeries, this hits, this hits right on the head of Elam. This, it hits at the centerpiece of their history and what they're trying to do today. And they are, they are definitely dangerous with this Islamic leadership over there. Uh, they're working on uh, medium range and intercontinental range ballistic missiles right now and may actually have uh, the uh, precursors of their final product. All they need is nuclear warheads. Yeah, and so when we talk about God is angry with Iran and we look historically at any opportunities God would have been angry with Iran, certainly during the time of Esther he would be angry. But when you look at the details of the entire Jeremiah 49 prophecy with Elam, it has to be, in my estimation, I am say this sincerely to you, dear audience, the Lord's anger that Jeremiah talked about in 596 B.C. applies right here, right now. He is furious with Iran. He, you know, he would be in agreement with Benjamin Netanyahu. This is a bad deal. And, and I believe the smoke is coming out of the Lord's nostrils right now. He is so angry and that I think any world leader or nation that gets in his way right now is in trouble because we talked about this at the beginning of the program. The Lord is going to uphold his holy name through the midst of his people Israel and Iran wants to wipe Israel off the map and that will not be tolerated and I believe the Lord is extremely furious right now with Iran and their nuclear program. Mm, very interesting. So now you have uh, the biblical view of something you're reading about in the daily newspaper, something you're reading about on the internet. You have uh, something that's actually happening. You know, what's fascinating to me, uh, Bill, is this. Uh, if, if what you're saying is actually true, this puts our current position uh, in, on, on, very, on a very short timeline. Uh, if all this is coming together the way you say, and we're reading the prophets and these prophecies are coming true, we don't have much time left. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you how I do look at this timeline that we're talking about. I think we're heading toward that big marquee event of Ezekiel 38 where God's going to pull this holy name. But although I think Ezekiel 38 is drawing very near for the various reasons we've been talking about, the relationships that Russia's got with Iran and with Turkey now, um, but I don't think it's next. The Israel described in Ezekiel 38 and 39 has to meet certain conditions. They have to be dwelling securely in the midst of the land without walls, bars, nor gates, and they have to be very prosperous because unlike Psalm 83 that's coming to take the land, they want to wipe Israel off the map, Ezekiel 38 has a different motive. They want to take the prosperity, the plunder, the booty. And so although I think that's near as we look on the timeline, I think certain things have to happen before Israel can be dwelling securely without walls, bars, nor gates. So I think I'm looking for other prophecies that are going to happen, and they're going to happen powerfully and soon and sequentially. And I think it's going to be a big deal, and they're all going to come back to back real soon. There's much more to say. In fact, we, we can't finish uh, all of the exposition that Bill has prepared today, and we're going to continue this on, on uh, another program. Uh, before we uh, bow out today, I just want to say that uh, we'd love for you to get this DVD, Out of the Mouth of Two Witnesses, featuring uh, Jonathan Kahn, Mark Biltz, Bill Salas, in well-produced interviews, very informative, uh, extremely understandable, and, and, and uh, a, a pleasant viewing experience, which I think is always important. Out of the Mouth of Two Witnesses, the DVD, $24.95. And, and how many uh, DVDs did you say were in here? Four discs, four discs are in there. And also I want to say, we also have in there a powerful testimony 
from Troy Duhon, who was the producer of the blockbuster Christian movie in 2015 called God's Not Dead. Very powerful Christian testimony. And I'm glad you mentioned that. It really is. I watched it, and it's 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 almost a tearjerker. It's mm -hmm. just very it's very emotional. But if you'd like to uh, have a real value, we're offering you the Bill Solace Collection, and that would be his two books, Psalm 83, Nuclear Showdown in Iran, and these discs, uh, uh, Nuclear Showdown in Iran, America, and the Coming Mideast Wars, and Psalm 83, plus the DVD we just mentioned. All of these, four DVDs, two books, $69.95. That would be about $116 value, years for $69.95. Go to the uh, prophecywatchers.com online bookstore, and you'll see this special right at the top. But you do want to watch this DVD. Current events, things are happening so quickly, uh, you need to apprise yourself uh, of uh, the biblical way of analyzing today's news. We've got a couple of minutes, and uh, let's kind of talk about that timeline. Everybody's kind of concerned about a timeline. There are some people out there that are kind of panicked. There are those who are saying we've got to lay up food and we've got to keep put our guns and ammo in order and we've got to get ready and, and uh, because times are going to be rough. Uh, well, where do you put yourself in all this? Well, <clears throat> I do believe we're in the final generation, Gary, and I do believe it is wise to be prepared for the powerful prophetic events that we've just barely touched upon that I believe are coming very soon because I think we're very close to this Gog of Magog invasion. I think this is where we're headed in that situation. And I think we're not only dealing with Psalm 83, which will probably precede that because it's those enemies around Israel that have to be dealt with so that Israel can dwell securely and Ezekiel 38 can happen. We're dealing with Jeremiah 49 Elam, but we're also dealing with other things. What about those prophecies dealing with Isaiah 17, the destruction of Damascus? What about where's, what's going to happen to America in the midst of this stuff? I yeah. believe America is in Bible prophecy, and we don't seem to find ourselves in a superpower status, and I think we find ourselves in the Ezekiel 38 prophecy, which I talk about in the America Coming Mideast Wars DVD. What about the rapture of the church? Do we have to be here for Ezekiel 38? It says God upholds his holy name in the midst of my people Israel. It doesn't say in the midst of my people the church. We don't even have to be here for that. So in those that offer you've got with these books, we're covering all these subjects. They're very important. They're drawing very near. And I think they actually, many of these precede the big event of Ezekiel 38 and 39. And we need more time to talk about this. And we'll have that time on our next program. Uh, we're going to get together with Bill again. And we're going to talk about uh, the way the timeline is laid out. We're going to talk about Ezekiel 38. Everybody has uh, written books on Ezekiel 38. They have placed it <clears throat> in a certain way in the prophetic timeline. Uh, I think Bill has a very good handle on it. And we're going to talk about it more completely in our next uh, program. Bill, thanks for being here today. Thanks, Gary. Very I'm great. Gary Stearman. And by the way, keep watching, everybody. We are. Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com or follow us at facebook.com slash prophecywatchers. Keep watching, everybody, and we'll see you soon.